Hey guys, Shea Bear 1000 here. Another flea market find. I have here a vintage two horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. So, let's get it home and take a look at it. Stay tuned. Okay guys, we're back. All right, what we have here, we have a two horsepower Briggs and Stratton. Um, whoops. Vintage. It's a, it's a vintage uh, Briggs and Stratton engine. My GoPro's laying over there. Uh, so what I got here, we've got a horizontal shaft. It lays sideways. Now, what's now on these? I can't zoom in real good with this camera, guys, but I will zoom. But right here is one place you can put oil in and check it, and the other one is over on the other side. Now, the reason why they did that was because when this was made, it's only a two horsepower. I mean, you could use it for a go kart engine, but uh, it, it, you know, there's just not much power here. What they used these for was like maybe for a small tiller or, you know, one of them rotary mowers, like a lawn mower that you push that had the rotary blades on it. So that way, if you put it up against something, you know, and it was kind of in the way, of course, you can see what, but you know what I'm talking about. Let's say, you know, it's up against something. It's kind of hard to get to. You can use it this way. Or if you spun it around the other way, of course then you could get to it back here. So, I'm not sure what size shaft that is. I'm thinking 5 8 maybe. But, anyway, spoiler alert guys. Here we go. Let me show you this. We got this. And we have this. Upcoming, upcoming videos. Oh, this is something super cool I bought last week. I bought this. Did I, uh, yeah, I zoomed in, hang on, there we go. How about this? A stethoscope, but a special kind of stethoscope. It has an end on it. So what this is for is if you are, let's say you're working on, you know, an engine's kind of got some valve noise or something, you're not sure where it is, you can take the point of this and stick it on each cylinder and see where the noise is coming from and once you put these on yes you can hear it very well I haven't seen one of these in a long time and I just had to have it I think it was like three bucks I was like here you go here's three bucks anyway I set that out to show you that like I said spoiler alert there um, another spoiler alert here you guys know what this is I know a lot of you do so whoops so there you go Anyway, that's upcoming videos. So anyhow, back to this. Um, I got this today at a uh, flea market, an indoor flea market. So it was pretty much the owners of, of the place, you know, uh, you rent spaces and they sell things for you on consignment. You know, they just charge you so much for selling your stuff for you. So we went there today. On the way back from our little adventure from this weekend, and um, that's I I seen this. They they had a lot of stuff for being indoors. It's, it's kind of big. And they had a lot of stuff, and I seen this this little engine here. It's a little Bergen Stratton engine. It had forty bucks on it. I didn't want to give forty bucks on it, but something. I pulled the rope. You know, it's not locked up, but it did feel like it had good compression. It's clean. I did take the cap off and look inside. Someone did train, drain the uh, fuel out of it. That's good. So if they took the time to do that, hopefully they started it up and let it run the rest of the way out. What may be in the pickup tube and whatnot. But I don't think there will be a problem there. The gas tank's very clean. There's no rust in it. Um, uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'll give it a little pull. And I gave it a pull and it kind of bit me. 
So I knew it's got some kind of spark. I don't know. That's why we have my handy dandy spark tester uh, to check for spark. Now this, this by the way guys, will not check your plug. This is just telling me that the coil and the points are good to the plug. Now that doesn't mean, you know, well I've got spark, it says over here, that doesn't mean the plug's sparking. So we'll check that too, but I just want to see how good of a spark it is. Also guys, this thing here, um, let me get you down here. Now this, I don't know what year it is, I can't see that this carburetor uh, I'm kind of trying to gauge the age of it so to speak I'm thinking pre-80s or early 80s I'm not sure and this 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 air cleaner here I do not believe it to be original on this engine because I believe if I remember right these I, I believe the exhaust to be original uh, but these had like a over here a little closer so you see what we're talking about here backwards okay these had a an air cleaner that kind of you gearheads will, will know what I'm talking about. They kind of came around and went like this and then went over and then kind of had a little jog out there for it and then back over. That way you could reach your, your cap. Uh, so I don't believe this to be original and also I think it was painted because I don't know if you can see it on this camera or not but there are runs in the paint. It's kind of shitty. To where the rest of it's all really consistent. Now, hang on. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, someone's taped this up. Let's see what's on this air cleaner. Maybe we'll get a clue as to what the air cleaner came off of. Okay. Yeah, see painter's tape. So, I don't know if it's been rebuilt, but as far as other than this, I do believe the engine to be correct. I'm just not sure what era, what period, what time frame it's from. My glasses are fogging up. It's very hot out here right now. It's over 100 heat index here in Florida. But, and I'm sure it's worse than that out west like Arizona, you guys. Man, I love you guys. Out there making them videos in the desert for us. Appreciate it. Now, just this engine maintenance and... Uh, air cleaner care it is a Briggs and Stratton however I just don't think this is for what I've seen on them type of carburetors I don't think this is original to this engine because like I said it has been repainted um, but anyway let's see what's happening here. so what we're going to do is first now I do not have a C clamp to hold this down okay onto my little workbench which is a desk by the way but I think what we're going to do is we're, we can go ahead and check for spark I know it bit me but I didn't really pull it hard so I don't know how much it's got it could be a weak spark I don't know this will tell us if this lights up really really bright we've got a great spark if it's orange and consistent it will be enough to uh, fire a plug. You can do the same thing with a test light. But right now, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and check and see what kind of spark we do have. Because we do know it does have spark. Move you over here and see if you guys can see what's happening here. Okay, so what you do is you pull your spark plug wire off. You put this end on it right there. That's a little loose and a little rusty. But then put... So I'm going to move it around here. Then put this end onto your spark plug. Like I said, it's not checking your spark plug for spark, but it is checking your coil and points. Also, before you do that, on these, some of these engines, for a kill switch, right 
right here, they would have a piece of metal, a tab, that would that would kind of come over this way. And what you did to shut it off is you would push that tab over and um, ground out the spark plug and that would shut it off. It looks like the camera is fogging up too. I'm sorry guys. So anyway, and also down here, this one does have a kill wire coming from the points or the coil. Uh, I'm not sure on this one. I can't remember. To where if this is all the way back, what it does is ground out here and it does the same thing as what you did up there only it does it here and it grounds it out so what we're going to do it's got this uh, throttle cable handle on here like this so see if I oops, if I pull the throttle cable all the way up that takes away from there now if I go farther it pushes this rod which in turn opens up your choke which is right here you pull it out and that blocks off air going into the intake or into the top of the carburetor this is actually intake over here this is the carburetor it's all in one okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and push this back okay and I'm going to just pull it right there for now that way because if it's clear up here, I don't know if it's shutting it off or not. But this way, I know it's not going to kill the spark. So let's see what happens there. And we're going to go from there. So let's... Too much stuff, guys. Okay, so. Let's get you up here to where you can see if we're getting spark or not. So it should be right there. Let's give it a crank. You see it sparking? that orange that means it does have a consistent spark every time so that means the coil and points are good you know maybe after it's running if it will run I don't know it can uh, you know it may need to be adjusted the points clean whatever now what we're going to do is we're going to pull a spark plug out which is a three-quarter socket I know it's not a plug socket but I really don't care about this plug so it's a champion I I don't care for him but but anyway what I'm going to use here my ratchet happens to be a vintage 3h drive ratchet with a swivel head so that's pretty cool and ratchet and driver so let's go ahead and pull this plug out of here and we'll check for spark on the plug Whatever this was, it was well maintained. I mean, you can see that. Okay, the plug. See, this don't focus, but. Gap looks to be correct. Does look a little blackish. Uh, kind of carbony. Uh, you know, it could need the. Uh, it could need the uh, carburetor adjusted. It's not oil because it's not wet. So let's see if we see a blue spark on this. And if we do, we're good. See that? Perfect spark. All right. So let's stick this back in here. Okay. And I am going to go ahead and tighten it up. Because if I want to prime this one, I'm going to prime it over here at the carburetor, not up here. I hope it's not fogging up too bad for you guys because it's hot out here in this little garage. Now what I'm going to do, uh, it's time to give it a whirl and see what happens. Now I have no gas in it whatsoever right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dribble a little bit in here and start here. If it fires, then we're good to go. Then we'll put it on the ground. I'll back you guys up and we'll start it for the first time. Now what it was... Like I said, uh, they tried to call the owner of the engine. And, uh, because I say, you know, they said, well, what do you want to know? I said, really, all I need to know is if there's any wiggle room on the price. I don't know if I told you this or not. But that 40 bucks on it, they tried to call the owner. He wouldn't answer the phone. She said, well, it's Sunday afternoon. He's probably having a couple beers. I said, well, that's fine. You know what? She said, but what we can do is we can knock 10% off of that price. They had 40 on it, so I got it for 30 
36 bucks. I don't want to be in, into it too much because I'm not buying this to keep, I'm buying it to sell. But I figure for 40 bucks, I can't really go wrong. You know what I mean? So, uh, I know the coil's good. You know, there's $20 right there. The recoil, the pull rope, you know, that assembly. I know, you know, there's another 20 Here's my money back. The carburetor, if it's any good. You know, there's another 20. So I'm, uh, I'm making money on it either either way. You know, uh, the exhaust pipe, the muffler, I could probably get 10 bucks out of. So so you know, I'm already into it for. Uh, well, I'm into it for 36 bucks, but I'm already going to make money on it. So hang on one second. Let me get a little bit of gas here. I've got a little. I don't want to. To run too long guys because for the simple fact that oh uh, shoot I think I took my bottle outside because I have no way to hold it down right now outside I don't care if it walks around so I'm gonna shut you off just for a second and I'll be right back with you hang on guys okay guys what I've done here is barely put just a tiny bit of fuel in here and I put a hole in the cap just enough to dribble a little bit in the carburetor because I don't want it to run too long and let's see if this thing's going to run uh, put a little more in there hit the carburetor shaber alright so let's see if it'll fire for us okay you guys ready let's do this Second crank. Woohoo! All right. Yes. Briggs and Stratton, number one, baby. I love Briggs and Strattons. I love them. Awesome. So, we have a runner. So, guess what? Now, what we're going to do, so we really didn't, I really don't get to work on it, but I, I, I can make money on this. And it didn't even smoke. Sometimes it takes a minute for them to start smoking. But what we're going to do is we're going to fill this tank up and we're going to take it outside maybe i'll put a couple blocks around it so it can kind of sit still and let's start it up see how it runs see if it needs any kind of adjustments and let it run for a little bit let it warm up make sure it's not smoking or knocking or anything like that but uh when we was looking at it well okay what we did when we first looked at it i don't know if i told you we left and we went to another antique store which i bought a pretty cool lighter that's going to be another uh spoiler alert another video about a little a uh, little lighter a uh, cigarette lighter well it's actually a pipe and cigar lighter but any anyway it's another video so and then we went over across the street have something to eat on the gulf coast again in um anyway uh we, we went to a place called crackers and uh like a seafood place and stuff but it's really nice it was right on the water so crystal river uh but it's only like a mile or two off so it's kind of like the mouth of a uh you know of the gulf coast so we was pretty close there but it's only like 20 minutes from where we live so but anyway we went over and got something to eat sat there had a couple drinks well she drank water i had i had a pitcher of beer and I kept talking about it. She said, honey, if you want that engine, go get it. <laughs> I said, all right, we will. So I went over and got it, brought it home, and here we are, and it runs. So if that's not worth 100 bucks, I'll let it rot in the ground, you know. But because uh, it is vintage. I don't think it's antique, but it is vintage. Because the carburetor, I haven't seen carburetor like this in a long time. I know the 80s, they started coming out with the primer bulbs and no choke this actually had the choke on it so it's hard to gauge it but I, I can find out later on I doubt if I do a video on it what I can do is I can pull the uh, the recoil cover off assembly off and uh, check the flywheel I may have to pull the flywheel off but there some of these did and some of them didn't I know the ones in the 50s which I can tell you this is not from the 50s far cry from it but the ones in the 50s some of them did have the year printed on the flywheel 
Uh, hopefully this one does. If not, I'll see if I can find some other numbers and we'll go from there. So give me a, a minute to set this up and uh, outside here and we'll start it up and let it run a little bit see what happens all right so hang in there guys okay guys we're back now i did fill it up about three-fourths full now i am going to go ahead and prime it again because we ran that out and let's start it up and see how it runs Let me get a screwdriver here and we'll adjust the carb. And the shut off works. Cool. The kill switch. Let's see if we'll start back up. There we go. So there you go guys I think that's a win all right let's shut it off I need to uh, shouldn't be idling that fast so let's go ahead Where I like to hear it idle. So, but anyway, guys. Right. Well, we got her, guys. We have a runner. So, anywho. Whoops. Oh, I see my fat beer good. There we go, guys. So, there's another one for you. Not really how to, so I'll just chalk this up as a, another flea market find. And uh, we're good to go. I think I'll, um, it, it might need the, another little bit of adjustment. I may take that throttle cable off. It's not the right one for it, but it does work. But um, to take it off and see, you know, where I can get it to to be adjusted where it's not 
coming off onto the kill switch to where it will idle when I was holding the throttle back. Other than that, uh, I think it's going to go on the auction block unless I find something to put it on. So, that being said, I'm going to thank you guys for watching. And uh, remember, catch our video out. Yeah, catch it. Catch our video. Check our video. Catch our video of uh, we went to the butterfly exhibit yesterday. So we're going to do that. And like I said, I gave you a couple spoiler alerts. Uh, some items as seen on TV items that I'm going to review. So I'm going to start doing some more of them things. Uh, maybe once, twice a month. Depends. Um, yeah, there you go, guys. So that's a runner. Like I said, uh, I'll do some research and when I find out about approximately what year it is, I will let you know. I know some guys I can get a hold of that I can probably send a picture to and they'll give me within five years of what that engine is. That's all I need. I just want something. That way if I find something next weekend at a flea market or something that this is kind of, you know, that era, I can put it on there and maybe make a little more money. But uh, like I said, for me, it's not a big enough engine for a good cart, but We'll figure something out with it. Uh, if not, we'll just sell it and, and take that money and buy something else do another video. So again, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week. Bye-bye now.